G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to DCS World with Mags. Today we'll be taking out the Mil Mi-8 MTV, otherwise known as the Magnificent 8. This helicopter was developed by Bell Simtech for DCS World and it is fantastically detailed. It's also, well, it's an odd one to describe. It's both easy and difficult to fly at the same time. Well, difficult really isn't the right word actually, it's more unforgiving. The Mi-8 is a big helicopter. It is huge, it's heavy, it's long, its rotor diameter alone is almost the length of a B-17. It is a massive, massive machine with a massive lifting capacity. But we'll go more into the Mi-8 specs in just a moment, we've just reached our target, so let's begin the attack. And as you can see, the Mi-8 carries a significant amount of firepower, and that wasn't all of the rockets. That was just, well, that was a good dose of them, at least for this particular payload. The biggest payload of unguided rockets I've heard about an Mi-8 carrying was 96 in a single load. For this mission, we're carrying less than half of that. However, we do have two external ballistics pods that we'll be using to do some strafing once we're out of rockets or the convoy is in the correct position. Now at the moment I'm just circling over the convoy after hitting it, I've already taken out over half of the convoy's vehicles. Just checking in the town, make sure no vehicles have escaped up the main street that I've missed. Keeping an eye on the area right at the mouth of the town, that's where most of the vehicles seem to be located at the moment, hidden in amongst the buildings and under the trees, and hidden in amongst the wrecks, assessing the amount of damage, working out how many vehicles I have left to deal with, and doing little precision strikes here and there trying to take out additionals. And at this point it's time to change over to guns, so just flick the little switch just on the overhead, this flicks us over to ballistics pods, and now we're in direct fire mode. So bringing it around wide, and then I'm going to do a slow cruise up the roadway leading into town looking for additional vehicles. That pass it looks like I managed to eliminate a whole bunch of vehicles that were trying to escape into the town and down the main centre of the town. However, we still have vehicles moving around in amongst the wrecks and just on the outskirts looking for cover. They'll all start heading for the town soon as well, so I'm going to have to start picking these off before they can group up. So as I cherry pick some of these stragglers, how about we talk a little history on the MI8. It first entered service in 1967 and is currently in operation with over 80 different countries around the world, making it one of the most widely flown transport helicopters on the planet. And with over 17,000 units built, it's currently the world's most produced and flown helicopter. As I said earlier on, it's surprising just how big the MI-8 actually is. From the ground to the top of the rotor hub, she stands at 4.7 metres tall, however blade movements can increase this height to 5.3 metres. Her rotor diameter is 21.2 metres, or almost the length of a B-17, with the main fuselage coming in at 18.4 metres from the nose to the tail rotor hub. If you include the rotor diameters of both the main rotor and the tail rotor, the Mi-8 stands in at 25.3 metres long, which is longer than a B-17. She has a maximum takeoff weight of 13 tonnes, which includes 4 tonnes of cargo and fuel for the flight and will scoot along at a maximum speed of 250 kilometers an hour or a comfortable cruising speed of 230 to 240 kilometers an hour. Her maximum hover altitude is almost four kilometers up and she can fly out to a maximum of five kilometers providing she keeps movement up. As for ordnance, as I said before, this thing can carry a lot. The advantage of being able to lift four tons of cargo means you can put four tons of weapons on board and there's very little that hasn't been swung off an Mi-8 in its lifetime. Unguided rockets, machine guns, heavy machine gun pods, cannons, grenade launchers, even unguided bombs have all been used. Anyways, at this point I'm just letting the convoy filter into the main street of the town. I'm going to do another pass with the remaining rockets that I have. Unfortunately, I didn't have anywhere near as many as I thought I did, so that was almost a wasted pass. I should have done that with guns. The vehicles have now scattered offside. However, it did only look like there was a couple of them left. Once you take out the ones I just destroyed and that rocket passed out of the equation, I'm assuming there's probably only going to be four or five vehicles. So, if I let them get to the other end of the main street, they've got to do a turn. That will be the point to go for another gun run on them. And here at the moment, I'm just admiring the damage I did in my first rocket pass. That was, uh, 
it was actually a pretty smooth run. I could have taken out a couple more vehicles, it would have been nice, but this was not bad. And I spy through the smoke up ahead another truck that I missed. And that solves that issue. So we head up to the end of the main street. At this point the vehicles that made it into the town should be getting ready to exit and that will be the point that I start doing a bit of a strafing run on them. And there they are, just on the corner turning right. Quick pass with the guns and rotate back around and see if we can get eyes on them, see exactly how many are left and line up for our next attack. So as we complete the turn and pick up a little bit of altitude to get into a good position to look down upon the convoy, we can see there is actually four vehicles remaining. Four vehicles that I'm yet to kill. It looks like we've got three Humvees in the lead and a transport truck that is a little bit further back. So we need to eliminate all of those and that's the entire convoy destroyed. And at this point what I'm thinking about doing is heading a little bit up the road, turning the chopper to the right and then rotating around so I'm facing back at the road and just lining up the shots so when the vehicles come through I can pick them off one at a time, doing my best to conserve ammo because at this point I actually don't think I've got a lot left. I'm out of rockets, I don't know how much I've got left in the pods but it cannot be much. And so we begin our move on the lead transport and pull the trigger. And you can hear the drums rattling, but nothing's coming out. We are now officially out of ammo. Now I was actually sort of desperately hoping here that I might actually have a little bit more in one of those pods. So I immediately start flicking through the switches all over the helo. The MI-8 is designed to be flown by three people, pilot, co-pilot, and the engineer loadmaster who sits in the central position. What's interesting is you, to control the weapon systems, you need to jump between the pilot and the co-pilot system because both operators have different sets of controls to control different parts of the weapon systems and the pylon activation. So I'm jumping back and forth between these two positions at the moment, trying to see if I can find anything left in these pods to actually use. Sadly, there's nothing left. There's no bullets left on board. There's no rockets left on board. At this point, the last four vehicles of the convoy are going to get to escape because I've got nothing left to fire at them. So anyways, at the start of the video I said that the MI-8 was a little bit to the difficult side or at the very least a little, uh, a little unforgiving when you fly her. And this largely comes down to a size and mass. She is a massive, heavy machine. And once she builds up a little bit of momentum, it actually takes quite a bit to be able to arrest that. You get very used to flying around helicopters, smaller helicopters at least, like the Huey, which you can sort of throw a bit to the left and throw it back to the right, and the helicopter will settle itself. You can be fairly aggressive on the controls. The MI-8 requires long, smooth motions. If you're aggressive on the stick, she will start to have all sorts of flight issues. Once you get used to sort of letting the MI-8 go where it wants to go and just using small movements, very gentle, very controlled movements to keep her in line, she is incredibly easy to fly. A little bit complex on the startup and there is a hell of a lot of controls inside of this cockpit as it is a cockpit that's designed to be operated by three people, but the actual flight itself is very simple, very smooth and very, very, very stable. The unforgivingness simply comes from the fact that you cannot manhandle her into doing what you want to do. The same goes with takeoffs and landings. Takeoffs need to be very smooth, very slow, very controlled. If you try and take off too fast, you'll overtalk the rotors, you'll damage the engines, she'll break. The same thing goes with dropping altitude coming in for a landing. You have to take it incredibly slow. If you drop altitude too fast, she'll start to drop like a stone. You'll pull the power back on to try and slow that down and she'll just break and you will slam into the ground and destroy yourself. Everything needs to be slow and methodical. Do that and it is a beautiful machine to fly and it's easily my second favorite helicopter after the Huey because nothing ever is gonna take the title of the Huey. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below and until next time, click like if you do, subscribe if you wanna see more, fly smart, fly safe, and I will catch you in the skies.